So, um, yes, it's true that China was not bound to peak its emissions for another 13 years. But the reality is that China appears to have peaked already, uh, and at a level of emissions that is one third of the United States. So, um, in India, in the case of India, per capita emissions are one tenth of the US, and because it's a rapidly growing country, it's increasing. But both countries are investing much, much more rapidly in renewables. Both countries now have renewable capacity far greater than the United States. So this is not just about incremental things. But why are they doing this? They are really doing this primarily in their self-interest. Why? Because fossil fuel-based energy is not just creating carbon. It kills people. You know, the cost of lives in China because of its pollution is a gargantuan 12% of GDP. Both India and China this year, more than a million people die every year, and it's rising rapidly because of pollution. So the, the case for doing this is very much in self-interest. But I want to come back to the point that Phil made, which is it may be in the aggregate national interest to move, but don't forget about vested interests. So for the West Virginia of the United States, there are coal regions in China. There are coal regions in India, which have exactly the same kinds of geographic issues. There's also a big lobby of so-called clean coal manufacturers. Okay? So you know, there's, there are countries that export coal. So th there will be vested interests. And one of the things is, how do you ensure that you're following the greater public good while taking care of people who will be, in some sense, have to pay some of the adjustment costs. And the reason I make that point is that argument is exactly the same as in trade, where the US is again now an outlier. Okay? And these two issues, climate and trade, is, are going to be the two big issues on the global discussions, and the US is, go you know, is not going to be really a major player on the table. 